the human toll of the Trump administration policy of separating children from their parents at the border is evident in the cries of those children. Earlier today, I went to the border to meet Jennifer Harbour. She's a civil rights attorney, and she is the one who obtained that very audio recording. I asked her how she got it. Well, there was a whistleblower who made the tape recording. That person made it directly. Um, that person brought it to me. We had a legal consultation about different issues, and the whistleblower asked me to make it available to the press, which I did. And that tape was taken in in the Ursula Center in the McCown. Center. I cannot. I can't disclose which. I see. Customs and Border Patrol offices it was it was taken in it was taken in a place where children are being separated from their parents and um, was taken in the last few days um, I, I think um, maybe it's useful you, you you've been down here doing this work here on the border for 40 years right? yeah okay yeah. maybe can you tell us what what's changed in the last say six weeks under this what the administration calls zero tolerance policy what have you seen firsthand I have never in 40 years seeing children separated from their parents. It's unheard of for a misdemeanor. I mean, next time you get a parking ticket, do you expect your children to be taken away, really? Um, we have never seen people piled up on the bridge asking for asylum, which is the legal way to do it. They're following the laws completely. They're legally requesting. Nowadays, they're not allowed to sit in the big air-conditioned waiting room where there's bathrooms and stuff. They had to sleep with their children on the cement sidewalk Two weeks, 16 days in Reynosa, on the Reynosa Bridge and over in Roma. That lasted for about three weeks. There was a three-month-old baby that went to a hospital. The, 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 the argument for the administration is if you don't cross at a port of entry that is illegal, that is not protected under international asylum law, when people go to ports of entry, which are the border crossings with a border checkpoint and all the stuff, and you come and you say, I'm from Guatemala, I'm here seeking asylum. All of this is, is aimed at shoving people back to the countries they came from and letting them die there. Number one, you tap on the door and say, I'm here. At the beginning of last year, and now in many places, including El Paso and Brownsville, what they're most likely to say is, go away, we won't do it. And let me just be clear, is that new? Um, it happened a little bit last year at the beginning of the Trump administration. That has never happened before. Okay, so that's complete. That is a new thing that happened yes. under Trump. That when people would present themselves for asylum, being told essentially no room at the end, get out of here. And this is because, as far as you can tell, someone has sent word down to CBP, the frontline CBP officers who are manning these ports of entry, to say for the first time that you've been doing this work in 40 years, you cannot come in. They're saying, we will not let you apply for asylum. If they aren't sleeping on the bridge now, what a lot of the Border Patrol agents are doing is saying, we're going to call Mexican immigration to come drag you away. And people are terrified of that. So they're running back to the safe houses in Reynosa, which are not safe at all. They're a number one target for kidnapping by the cartels. Right. So that's the, this is really important. So the squeeze here is two things are happening. One is at the ports of entry, increasingly, they're just not letting people come in to apply for asylum. People are then desperate. They've made this journey up from the Northern Triangle. They then go back, find a coyote, try, try to, to cross somewhere else. Right. And then that's when, if they're apprehended and they present for asylum, they're punished. That's, that's when their children are And not only that, they're punished in an additional way if they come legally, right? If they make it through the hot cement sidewalks and everything and get to, you know, get through their credible fear interview, which means they have a reasonable claim, a right to be heard by the judge, then as of last year, it had been less and less that people like that were being released on parole or bond. Um, and that means if you have no criminal record, um, you have clear ID, your fingerprints come back clean, and you have a number of U.S. citizen or LPR relatives who will take care of you, then you go live with them while your case goes through for a year or two. They stopped doing that. Only some women who were pregnant were al allowed out, and for a long time, women with children. But people like an 18-year-old who had come running up here um, because both of his brothers had been killed by the cartel, 
He went to Port Isabel Detention Center. Those are exactly like prisons. They're not, they're supposed to be civil detention centers. They're not even, there are not even partitions between the toilet bowls there. They're not allowed to touch one another to comfort each other. If someone gets news that a relative has just been murdered and is crying, if they try to hug them or anything, they're told, get back or we'll put you in the hole. Um, so if you go by the river, your kids will be taken away. Huge punishment. If you walk across the bridge, you may get turned back altogether and kidnapped at the foot of the bridge. Or if you're lucky enough to finally get across the bridge, you may get to sleep there. Or if you actually get in and pass your credible fear interview, so you're going to at least get before an immigration judge someday, you could spend two years in prison. And what a lot of people do after being in there long enough, they give up and they go back to the dangers they fled, and they do get killed. Which is, of course, the entire point of the policy. Jennifer, um, thank you so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.